on a Sunday afternoon to celebrate and reflect. Because sometimes birthdays are reflective and not celebratory. You're kind of thinking, I'm a year older. What did I do last year? Have I accomplished anything? And for a city like this, we have a lot to reflect on and to celebrate. So thank you very much for taking the time to be at the launch of Myzeum Intersections. We are beyond happy from our little launch to this big, gorgeous, look, look up, like, look at the space. How gorgeous is this space? Okay, I'm gonna stop babbling. My name's Karen Carter. I happen to be the executive director for Myzeum of Toronto. And my job right now is to introduce our fearless leader. She is the board chair and the founder for this Museum Without Walls. And her name is Diane Blake. Diane? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diane Blake, and I am the founder and board chair of Museum of Toronto, an innovative twist on the traditional museum model. First of all, I'd like to recognize that we are on the lands of the First Nations people and the Métis people. Secondly, I'd like to acknowledge our hardworking and dedicated Myzeum Board of Directors, Bev Tuthope, Maureen Marshall, David Crombie, and Ian Bandeen. Equally dedicated and even more hardworking are the Myzeum staff, Karen, Britt, Courtney, Jamie, and Josh. And together we are really thrilled to launch our inaugural Myzeum Festival called Myzeum Intersections. I want to give a huge thanks to Patterson Outdoor Advertising their in-kind donation of advertising on the TTC has allowed us to reach audiences that we could have never have dreamed of. So we're very thankful for that. Thank you also to the young astronauts. Uh, their technological support is helping us with all our digital uh, initiatives that are currently in the pipeline. We are also very grateful to the Royal Bank for their continued financial support. I'd like to thank Westbury National for their help with the event today, and also QRC uh, West, sorry, QRC West, for hosting us in this fabulous new building, which makes us all feel like spring, I think. And of of course, I want to thank each of you personally for being here today and for supporting us since our launch last May uh, 2015. We're very, very uh, pleased to see such a big turnout. To date, we have met with over 120 cultural and heritage-based organizations across the GTA. We have uh, hosted nine Myzeum on the Move events at various locations. Today, we launch our first ever festival, Myzeum Intersections. Today is also Toronto's birthday. So we want to celebrate by exploring our past and our present, and to imagine the future of the city that we all call home. Thank you. Big hand for our Diane. It takes very big, broad shoulders for somebody to uh, enter this type of sphere and to just have the guts to imagine a museum without walls. Like, really, Diane? What? How does that even come about? But she did, and she does, and she's, uh, she's our fearless leader, and we're very, very proud to have her. I can say that after working uh, almost 20 years, or a little over 20 years in the sector, she is probably uh, one of the most impressive uh, board members that I've ever had the pleasure to work with on days, and we all have those days where you don't want to get out of bed, and you're like, why am I doing this? On days when Bev and I are fighting. I remember Diane. <laughs> and I can keep going. Um, I mentioned Bev because I have to give a special shout out to him. If you look around, if you look up at these pretty balloons, if you look around at the signage, 
Um, that's Babtar Hope. He is an impeccable design eye, and we've been beyond lucky that he has come to this working board, seriously working, working like he gets paid sometimes. So Bev, thank you very much uh, from the bottom of my heart and from the staff. I know there are days where you want to hurt us because we're, we're not up to it. We don't think like him. Like who thinks like this? Who, who, who imagines this? But he does. And we're very grateful to have snagged such talent on our humble board. And I do want to uh, thank all the board members for their specific contributions. Um, Ian Bandine is the finance guy that makes sure our money is in check. Uh, Maureen Marshall chairs our programming committee. Uh, so thank you very much, Maureen, for leading uh, the team as we imagine this first programming concept. And we also have to shout out to our perfect former, but somewhat always mayor, David Crombie. Because when David's in the room, everything's good. It makes everybody feel like it's all right. Um, I would do want to specifically also uh, give a shout out to the staff. Diane has uh, named them. They are a tiny but mighty team. And when you work in the cultural sector, you want to have people around you who are willing to give that 150%, and they are that. But I also want to give a shout out to our special projects team. Rachel Ostep is the event planner extraordinaire, and she is the one that has set up this vibe to, I, I just walked in here this afternoon and it was you know ready to go, so thank you very much, Rachel. Um, Samruti Patel, who is a volunteer that's joined us, she works at the Royal Bank, and we love it when the corporates want to volunteer in culture, so thank her for uh, the help with this, as well as our social media team. You see a woman here with that camera. 90 and Alex is around somewhere. They're helping to grow our presence in social media and we're very grateful to them. I also want to thank Jeff for driving down early from Family Cottage to uh, be present. He's, he's not sure what we have planned for him yet, but he's also joined our volunteer team. He's laughing. Thanks very much, Jeff. Steam Whistle and Sublime Catering, the drinks, the food, you gotta thank the people that uh, allow you a bit of libation and something to eat in these moments, so thank you very much. Can I get a round of applause for all of that? So the last time we saw each other was May 2015. Can you believe it? It hasn't even been a full year yet. And at that time, we talked about the notion of co-creation. We asked Toronto to co-create this museum without walls with us. We asked them to think about the past, the present, and imagine the future. Um, and to be the Mai in Myzeum, and you've shown up in spades, and we are so grateful for that. So we thank you very much for being the Mai in Myzeum, and we hope to continue to imagine this notion of a museum and to set a precedent internationally that you don't have to have a big building to start a museum. You can start it by using the city and the people in your city as the museum. I also want to take the time to thank our interns from Centennial College, Victoria, Brent, and Julia. Victoria especially, because she drives in for the 905, and she's always saying to me, Karen, the drive, the drive, Karen. But we love her for it. And we also want to thank Lord Cultural Resources. They are the largest museum consulting firm in the world. They happen to hail from our fair city, and they always help the local as they're working on the international. So I don't think Gail was able to make it today, but I know that a couple of members of her team, and I won't say names because they might yell at me, but thank you very much for showing up to support us and for continuing to work with us on uh, innovative projects. And the design team at George Brown. We love creative minds, and we love the fact that students are willing to uh, work with us in this time and place. With that said, I'm going to introduce our public programs director, Britt Walter Nolan, who will talk to you a bit more in detail about the notion of intersections, what it means, what's our idea with this festival, and why we think it's a really innovative and interesting and appropriate way for it to be our first foray into uh, the programming world. Britt? <laughs> Well, thanks so much for ever, to everyone for coming today. Um, from Kensington Market to Scarborough, North York to the waterfront, the beaches to Etobicoke and beyond, Toronto is a city that is constantly defining and redefining itself. From the indigenous communities that originally occupied the land to the global city that it has become today. It is a story that cannot be told from just one point of view. It's a story with infinite perspectives and one that occurs in many places at many times. We decided to launch this festival on Toronto's birthday, but we greatly debated this issue. 
with our program, and pro program advisory committee. We recognize that this place has a much longer history than 182 years. We're a very young city. With its many amalgamations and transitions, it's also younger in many ways. The festival's theme, Intersections, explores the idea that this city is made up of meeting places, where two or more ideas, cultures, or sites come together to create something new and ultimately change each other in the process. I'm sure we've all experienced this. The 25 projects that are spread out throughout the GTA are collaborations as well, where two or more groups came together. They're co-creations that help us to better understand the complexity of our past while appreciating our present and challenging us to imagine our future together. I would love to thank the, all of the participating individuals for coming today. Your 25 projects throughout the city are really setting the standard for our entire organization moving forward. So thank you. I'm also gonna point out to everyone that if you see someone wearing a white button that says, ask me about, about my project, please do. There are literally hundreds of people involved in this festival today. And um, I, I just think they all deserve such a round of applause for the great work that we have in, ahead of us. Um, I would also like to um, personally thank our program advisory committee and jury who helped us to set out the vision and imagine the, the title of the festival and who have championed our projects. Um, our programming advisory committee chair, uh, Maureen Marshall, who's here today, um, and members Andrea Carnival, uh, Zara Ibrahim, Wendy Yang, Nancy McFadden, John Summers, Cyrus Marcus Ware, Annie Wong, Jay Young, and Duke Redbird. We have uh, the most amazing people who uh, advise me and help me to, to direct all of the programs. I also wanted to thank our SAS, who have added multiple perspectives to the, to the festival. Former mayor, uh, the Honorable David Crombie, third generation Chinese Canadian and author Arlene Chan, author, journalist, publicist, and live music festival presenter Dalton Higgins, and co-president of Co uh, Lord Cultural Resources, Gail Lord. We're so lucky to have these fantastic people in our circle. We hope that this festival will inspire Torontonians and visitors alike to explore and better understand this great city and continue the dialogue about urban issues. Um, we have a special intersectional musical performance um, that I'd like to tell you a little bit about as well. Um, it, these instruments actually embody the notion of intersectionality. Um, from our friends at Musidium, uh, what you can see here is the Nebula hand pan. It's made in Toronto by Solomon Joseph and Roger Sater, who are going to play for us. And it's a reflection of Toronto's multicultural society, inspired by Trinidadian steel, steel pans, Southeast Asian gongs, and the Swiss hong. So please join us for a little musical performance. <laughs> 